Uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, this is Mark Lull. I think you're all familiar with me. And uh, we're looking today at tables in Travers PC. We do have a lot to cover. Um, uh, tables, uh, they're, they're really not difficult, but there is a lot there. So we've got a lot to cover. And we're going to start with table basics. All right. So the very first thing, and we are, this is TPC Desktop uh, 21. So uh, if you don't, if you're not on TPC Desktop 21, you may not have all of the features that we're going to see today. But uh, going to show it to you and we'll go from there. So first thing, uh, David, would you please make sure you turn off your camera? Thank you. Um, so uh, we've got a subdivision here. I've rotated it to fit on the page. We're going to take a look at inserting a table. And we're going to start with the basics. So if I go to insert, I have line table, curve table, point table, and lot table. All right, we're just, I'm just going to choose line table right off the bat. Now, if you're on an older version, you will not see this. You get an option to create a table for the entire drawing or for individual traverses. We're not going to go into individual traverse tables just yet. We're going to look at the basics of tables. So I'm just going to leave it. It's going to be a table for the entire drawing. I'm going to say OK and it brings up the table dialog box. Now, all table dialog boxes have some or all of these uh, uh, settings in here. All right, so we're going to go through all of these settings in this line table dialog box. We're going to start up here with the style. All right, there are three possible styles, not all of your tables. Uh, use all three. Some of them just have two. The first one for a line table is auto. And what an auto table does is it looks at your line labels and if a line label is too long to fit on the line, like right down here I can see a couple, all right, they're too long to fit on these lines, so they're running horizontally rather than aligned. They will go in an auto table. That's what auto, an auto table does. Anything that does fit on the line won't go into an auto table. A manual table is just what you think it is. You're going to pick and choose what order to put the, uh, the labels into the table. All right? And all does just what it says. Now, with manual is the only one where you can control the sequence and what goes into the table. All right. Auto and all will do this stuff for you automatically. And the sequence that these objects go into the table is determined by the sequence of traverses in the traverses manager. In other words, the first traverse is going to do the, the first traverse in the in the traverses manager that has line labels will be those will be the first objects in the table. And those will be in the sequence within the traverse. So if it's lot 1 through lot 10, and they're in that sequence in the, in the Traverses Manager, you're going to have lot 1's lines, then lot 2's lines, etc. And they will be in the sequence that's in the Traverse. Okay. Now, um, one of the things that you can do is you can do uh, set a, t a table to maybe all or auto, and then switch it to manual. So this is one way of populating a table and then modifying it. Because when a table is set to all or auto, Traverse PC controls it. I can't delete uh, um, objects from the table. 
Um, all right, only a manual table gives you that ability. So I can populate it using auto or all and then switch it to manual later. All right, hold. And by the way, if you're not aware of this from anywhere in Travers PC, you can hit your F1 key to bring up the help topic for whatever you're looking at. It popped up on my other monitor. So here is the help topic for this. So if you're ever wondering, well, what the heck is hold? Here's an explanation of it, but I'm gonna talk about it here. So if we're looking at this drawing, hold is where am I going to want to put that table on the drawing, all right? Uh, because if I'm gonna put it in the upper left corner, I will want that table as it expands, I'll want it to expand down the page. If I'm gonna put it in the lower left corner, I'll want it to expand up the page, all right? Um, and if I go to the right side, then I will, will want it to expand up and to the left, all right? So that's what the hold corner is about. So I'm gonna tell this that I'm gonna put this table in the upper left corner, okay? Now, of course, color. This is pretty self-explanatory. What color do I want my table to be? Next is layer. And this can be very helpful. I might want to put my table on a table's layer. And we're gonna be looking at layers and, and how they can help us with tables a little bit layer, later. So keep this in mind. I can put my tables on a new layer. So I just go into my, my layers and add a new layer for my tables. And then that's gonna give me more control later on, right? Um, header. Do you want a header on your table? Uh, in other words, do you want it to say that this is a line table or whatever I want to call this, all right? And what alignment do I want for that? Do I want it centered, left aligned, or right aligned? All right, so my headers, I tend to like my headers center aligned. Personally, that's just, just me, all right. So what am I gonna call this? Well, in this case, I'm just gonna call it a line table. We'll look at some other things a little bit later on this. Font, fairly self-explanatory. What font am I gonna use? What font size and what font style? Normal, bold, italics, bold italics. What do I want for this title? All right, now this is the entire table title. Then we have column headers. All right, so these are gonna be the headers uh, such as bearing and distance. All right, so these are the column headers. What font do I want for them? What font size and style? And now we're gonna get into the items themselves. So each line in this table, what font am I gonna use, font size and style once again. But then I can assign a prefix. Uh, prefixes are not available in all tables, just as not all styles are available in all tables. Prefixes are not either. All right, for a line table, I could call, I could set a prefix to whatever. Our default is an L, so it's gonna show up as L1, L2, L3, et cetera. All right, but I can change uh, this prefix. Next is a border. Do I want a border on this table? If so, what line style and line weight do I want? Maybe I want to fill the background, you know, so it stands out. I can fill it uh, with whatever color I want, like say antique white, all right? And then it that will block out anything that is under it. So I could position the table on top of something and it'll block it out. 
If I don't fill the background, then the table won't block out, block out anything that's under it. Next is sequence. Each table will have its own sequence. In this case, for a line table, for all traverses, my only options are bearing and distance. All right? So that's what's in here, bearing and distance. If you want it distance and bearing, that's totally up to you. All right. Alignment. Now, this alignment applies to the, the actual table contents, the table items. Do I want them left justified, center justified, or right justified? And how many decimal places do I want for my bearings and distances? All right, so you can set that. How much do I want in that table? Yeah, on the uh, sequence, just keep in mind that each table will have its own uh, things available. For example, a point table is not going to have bearing and distance, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, delimiters right here delimiters specify the characters that will separate any data you add to the table from uh, 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 that you add to the table all right so I could go in and modify one of the table items and throw in one of these delimiters say a slash and then I could type something in and that would then show up on that line to the right of that particular uh, line item. So I would, you know, if I'm going to be doing this, I would also do that then on the, uh, uh, on the column header line for this new column I'm creating. But this is how you could create a column for something that's not automatically in your table. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you. Columns. This is a little bit, there is, the, we have two kinds of columns, all right? So this can be a little confusing. We've got columns within the table. So, uh, you know, in this case, I've got uh, the line number, so L1, a bearing, and a distance. That's three columns there. But what this columns is, we'll see, um, in just a minute. Well, and actually, I'm going to set this to all to make sure that we'll see it. Um, what this is, is when, if my table is too tall, all right, I can tell Travers PC to split it into two columns or three columns or four columns. Now, each of these columns, these are table columns, not item columns. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. It should in just a minute. We can set a column spacing and a line spacing. I typically don't mess with these. So let's just take a look at this with one column with all the lines in it. I'm going to say OK. And here is my line table. And as you can see, it is darn long because I told it put all the lines in here. Now, I know, wow, that's too long. It goes, runs off the sheet of paper. I can go into its properties. And all I did, I just double clicked in the table itself. Now, you have to watch what the, uh, you know, you're either going to be looking at the status bar down in here, or if you've got the tooltips turned on, like I do here, it's going to tell you, I am on the line table, not an individual object. All right, so now I'm on a table item. All right, so when I'm on the table itself, I can simply double click it and it will bring up the properties. I could also right click it and go to properties to bring that up. Totally up to you how you get there. Double clicking is easier. It's taken me a while to get in the habit of using it because I always right clicked. So we're back in here to our table. So I could say, well, let's see if this will fit into two columns. So I'll just set this to two. Say OK, 
and I lost my table. Well, heck. Well, Drawing Data Manager. If you are not familiar with your Drawing Data Manager, you need to get familiar with your Drawing Data Manager because weird things can happen sometimes. I'm going to go into my layers and I put that on the tables layer. Let's go here. Here's my line table. I'm just going to double click it here. That gets me back in here. So what happened? Ah, that's what happened. I thought I had this set to upper left, but somehow I did not. Let me just OK that and see where we're at. Nope, I have lost it. Let's go back in here. Um, let's set this to one column and see what we've got. Going to regenerate the drawing. Isn't this fun? The Hazards of Live TV. I was not expecting this. All right, so let's set it to lower left. That's where it was when it disappeared. And one column. I think that's the way it was set. And I have lost it. OK, so I don't know what happened to my line table. At this point, I have no way to get this table back. So what do I do about it? For one thing, if I didn't have the drawing data manager available, I'd kind of be in trouble. What I can do here, I can just select the line table here and delete it. All right, so now I've deleted that table. I can go back now, insert a line table. Going to say OK. I'm going to try and set this real quickly. Let's say all. I want to say upper left. I do want a header centered. Um, oh, let's do a border and let's fill the background. Um, antique white. I like antique white. There we go. Um, and Let's go ahead and set columns already. Let's set it to two columns and say OK. OK, here's my table. Whoops, didn't quite get it. I'm just getting on the table. I'm going to drag it up to the upper left corner. And we can see that it's still too long. All right, so once again, I would double click on it and tell it how many columns I want. Let's go ahead and tell it five columns. Say OK. And it disappeared again. And I did not, I swear to you, I did not have this problem when I was working on this seminar. So something has gone haywire on me. And I forgot to put it on the tables layer. Uh, so it's on the zero layer. And switch to lower left again. Ah, I think we just identified a bug. OK. All right, so I know what's going on now, so I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to delete this. So that table's gone. I can go back. Let's insert it. And upper left, last time I promise, and having said that, I will be in trouble here. Oh, I want to put it on the tables layer. All right. So here it is with five columns. I forgot to center the, uh, the table header. And you can see how this works with multiple columns. OK? So that's the basics. You can see there is a lot there. And yes, I do have a, um, I do have a, um, a bug that I need to get written up there. Because that something is not holding properly in there. I will get that written up. All right, so now we've got this line table on here. Uh, 
oh, and I think I said this, this is set to auto. So, so a lot of my lines are labeled here. But if we zoom in on this, you're going to see L9, L10. And these are labeled in the sequence that they are in the traverses. So if we go over here to lot one, it probably has L1 on it, but I can't tell because there's so much other stuff on here. All right. Um, let's take a different look at this project. I've got another drawing in here. This is a drawing I used to create the graphic that went to you. No, nope, that's the wrong one. That's the drawing we were on. Here we go. So I just I, I created a portion of this drawing with a few tables just to illustrate how you might want to start using tables. So I created line tables for lots one through five and lot tables for those same lots a lot table for those same lots. Obviously, I'm not going to have individual lot tables. If I were going to do that, I would just let my lot labels do it rather than creating a table. All right. So let's, um, let's uh, go on here. Let me create a new drawing. And um, well, actually, let's start with this drawing. One of the requests we've had in the past is uh, I want to put my drawing on one sheet and my tables on another sheet. So let's take a look at that. All right. So one thing I can do here is, and this is going to get ugly, I'm going to tell you right off the bat. All right. So I've got a line table in here. Um, Let's add, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, let's go ahead and add a curve table. Now, curve table didn't ask me whether I wanted the entire drawing or individual traverses. And you'll see why when we get to individual traverses in just a bit. All right. I'm going to set this to all. And yeah, upper right, that sounds fine. Header, I'm not going to worry about centering it. These are going to be prefixed with a C. We're going to set it up the same way. Uh, don't forget to put it on the leaders layer. This is where this these layers are going to be important here. And let's give it the antiquite again, just for fun. Now, notice the uh, sequence here. Uh, the rest of this is the same, but I can modify the sequence in the table. All right. Um, and uh, let's do two columns on this. And OK. Ah, OK. See, now I told you this was going to get ugly. So let's move this table. Heck, let's move this table over here. And finally, let's put in a lot table. Insert lot table. Once again, it's not giving me an option to do individual traverses. And I do want all of them. I want it on the tables layer and a header. Just setting everything up pretty much the same. And notice, now here we've got a lot of options. So I can, you know, I can include a lot of things. Right now, I'm just putting square feet and acreage along with the lot name in there. Um, you know, so I can put error in here, various things I can put in my lot table. And I think I'm going to leave this as a single column. Now let's make this two columns, come to think of it. We'll say OK. And now I've got my lot table in here. All right. And as we can see now, we can no longer see our drawing. All right. But here's the trick. All right. What I can do now is I can go to my drawings manager 
and uh, I'm sorry, I did not want to do that. I can come here to sheet one and I can uh, duplicate that drawing. And I'm going to call this sheet two. I'm going to say OK and let yes, let's open it. So here's my sheet two drawing. All right. So what am I going to do here? What I'll do here is I'll go into my layers and I'm going to turn off all of the drawing layers. All right, basically all of these that say TPC on them. Um, I'll just turn them off and close this. So now I still have the tables here. If I had untagged the traverses, because the tables rely on the data from the traverses, then the, the tables would no longer have all their information in it. All right, now if I go back to my original drawing, because I put all these tables on their own tables layer, I could go into my layers and I can simply turn off the tables layer. And I missed the curve table, putting it on the tables layer. So I can simply go back into it. Oh, somehow I got it on the leaders layer. There we go, and it disappears. So now I have my drawing with all of the L1, L2, all of that stuff matches up with my, uh, with my uh, sheet two, all right? So hopefully that all makes sense. So got tables on one sheet, my drawing on another sheet. And I have a question here. Can you add suffixes like record? Um, when we're talking about a table, and I would assume that this would be line and curve table that we're talking about here, Scott, um, you, you would, let's go take a look at that. If we go back to the other drawing that has our tables on it, all right. I can, you know, I've never done this with a multi-column table. All right, I'm on this table item. All right, if I right-click this table item and go to properties, I could probably double-click that too, by the way. I could, remember there's that delimiter, I could throw in a slash and I could say record, say OK, and I have now added this column. And what I don't know, ah, it did pro, uh, pro, promulgate through the rest of the table. So then if I wanted to, whoops, I didn't mean to right click that, double click this, go, in, go into its properties, and I could put a slash and then enter whatever my record data is. I'm not going to type anything special in there. So I would have to do that then for each one of these line items. Um, I have templates set up with uh, uh, tables from previous versions. Should I update those templates? Um, not necessarily. Uh, these tables, your your tables should just come forward. They are they are drawing tables rather than individual traverse tables. So, uh, and I would guess that that's probably appropriate for most of the stuff you're doing. So I would just handle it individually. I think, Pat. Let's. Uh, make this a little simpler. I'm going to go to my traverses and let's just do, uh, let's make our drawing just lots one through ten.
All right, we've also got some road center lines in here. And that's really where a lot of your, um, you know, that's where you're going to be using tables a lot. All right, so we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and leave it like this. All right, but it's a lot simpler drawing. We don't have all that stuff cluttering up the, this place here. So I'm going to move this down here. So what I might want to do here is um, I want to create, let's start with a lot table. So I'm going to do all lots, and that's going to uh, include my streets. All right. Um, so I'm just going to say, OK. I'm not going to worry about all the other stuff I did as far as layers and all that here. You saw how that worked. All right, so I've got a lot, whoops, a lot table. Now a lot table, actually, I misspoke. It will not include the streets because they are not closed loop traverses. They are not lots. So now I've got my lot table in here. Now what I can do, let's start building our other tables. So I want a table here for Main Street. So I'm going to right click this. And um, I'm going to go to Traverse Tools and add a line table. Now, in this case, this particular traverse does not have any curves. So I'm not worried about curves. All I want is bearing and distance in this one. So I'm going to get rid of the rest of this stuff from the sequence and say OK. So now. Ah, I forgot to uh, to do that. Let's go back in this. Let's hope I don't lose this table. Um, actually, oh, I, that's what it was. I forgot to turn on the header that says line table, main street. All right. So it could say whatever I want it to say. I just want it to say main street. We'll say OK. So now I've got main streets table. And I could go through and do these others. Now let's do it a different way. Let's go insert line table and let's select the traverse. So this is a different way. That time I right clicked that traverse and went to, to traverse tools. Here I'm going up to the menu and inserting. And so now it's telling me to left click the traverse. Let's go ahead and get First Avenue. All right, I do want a header. There are no curves. Let's simplify it down here. And let's say OK. So now, and I didn't change the name to just First Avenue. And what you see now, interesting, it labeled these both TL1. That's interesting. I hadn't paid attention to that. Let's go back in here. And let's, uh, hey, I'm trying something new here. All right, so I changed the prefix to first av. And that's what it put on to the drawing, all right, rather than a number, all right. Um, so I could go through and do all of these. Let's um, let's do this uh, loop road here. So uh, let's do it a different way again. I'm going to right click on the background of the drawing, go to Insert uh, Line Table. And select the traverse, say OK, and I'll just click on this traverse. All right, so this is Riverside Loop. I'm going to just delete that and um, say OK. This is kind of 
duplicate. Let's turn off the header. Let's just copy this down here. And then the sequence. Now in this case, I do have curves. So I will want the curve data in here. I'll go ahead and say OK. And now here is my, um, my table for Riverside Loop. And so now each line says Riverside Loop. So it could be whatever I want it to be. All right. Um, totally up to you how you work with this. All right. But that's how we could do our lot tables uh, to, or I'm sorry, our line tables for these individual uh, road center lines. All right. I've got my lot table in. Let's take a look at the lots themselves, because this is probably where you're going to use this a lot. Uh, so I could right click on this one, go to Traverse Tools. This is what I find easiest. And I'm going to say, give me a line table. And um, TL1, OK. Um, so let's change this to say TL1, and you'll see what happens in a minute. And I'm just going to change this header to Lot1. Say OK. Uh, I think I've got everything. I'm going to say OK. So what I have now, because I gave it a prefix, of TL1, I have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now if I go to this one, Traverse Tools, Line Table, and I'm going to say TL2, and OK. So now, because I've changed the prefix, these are now TL21 through 25. And those will correlate down here to the lines in the drawing. So this is how you would use prefixes to work with individual lots this way. All right. Um, and you could go on and do all of the lots however you wanted to do it. Remember, you could uh, have all these tables on their own layer. So I could, once again, have the overall drawing here with all of my tables on a separate sheet if I chose. Right. Totally up to you how you want to use those. Um, about what happens if I have more than 10 lines well, let's find out. Let's go back to this guy here. And let's do a line table. If I can get my brain back to that. Line table. This one definitely going to have more than 10 lines. So this is Riverside Loop. Now, I shouldn't have done what I did with it earlier, but you saw how that would work if I did. And I am going to say, in this case, yeah, just, just because I haven't done a three yet, we'll do a three. And we'll say, OK. So to answer your question, whoops, escape, sorry. We now have. Once it gets to the 10th line, it's going to be 310. So if you wanted to, probably what you would do if you're going to use this methodology, you would do something like this, TL3 dash. OK, so that might be more appropriate if you're in this situation 
or even if you're not, you might want to just do that um, consistently. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so um, that should have answered it for you, Scott. All right. Now, move this guy up here. Yeah, I like this a lot better the way I did it this time rather than putting Riverside in the prefix. That was kind of a dumb idea, but what can I say? All right, now, we've looked at line tables, curve tables, lot tables. We have not looked at point tables. Point tables work like line tables in that I can tell it whether I'm doing the entire drawing or uh, individual traverses, all right? Uh, I'm just going to do one traverse here. Let's go ahead and do Riverside uh, Loop, I think is what I called it. And Riverside Loop uh, points, I would say, you know, whatever I want to say on it. Um, notice that I cannot change the prefix on the point table. There are two places, uh, three, I'm sorry, three places where you're not able to change the prefix. All right. One of them is a point table. And because the points in Traverse PC all have unique labels, there is no prefix. When I put in a point table, it is going to use the, the specific point numbers of those points. All right. So there is no prefix there. The other places where there is no prefix available, let's see, I've got a lot table here. In a lot table, uh, I'm not going to use a prefix because it's just going to use your uh, lot name. All right, so that's the second place it's not available. The third place it's not available is in the in the curve table. Uh, and we don't have a curve table in here. Uh, if I insert a curve table and, yeah, let's say all, this is going to be a, all right, there it is. Not as big as I thought. All right. Uh, and that's because some of them are in this table over here. So with a traverse line table, it includes curves. All right, a curve table for the drawing does not, uh, I can change the prefix here, but there is no, um, uh, there is no traverse curve tables, so uh, there's no option for a prefix there, so I kind of went down the rabbit hole on that example, didn't I? Sorry about that. So a curve table, I can set a prefix. A line table, I can set a prefix for all of them. A lot table, no prefix, because we're going to use traverse names. And point tables, no, uh, no prefix option, because we're going to use the actual point numbers. OK. Now, so we have looked at all of the tables Traverse PC has with the exception of one. And this particular table, it is a table, but it's not called a table. Insert legend. A legend is a table, all right? It is totally different than the other tables. Um, I'm either going to use automatic point symbols, all right, and once again, I could populate it using automatic, and this comes in very handy. 
I can populate it using automatic point symbols, header, this stuff should all be familiar, layer, all of that stuff. All right, the items themselves. All right, how many columns, just like we had before. We also have some width factors, and you'll see why in just a bit, borders and fill backgrounds. All right, I'm just going to say OK here. And I bet it's down in the lower left corner. Here is my legend. So it was set to automatic, so it automatically picked up a triangle on a set rebar. All right. Now, once again, I may want to remove things from this legend. So at that point, I could go back in and set, uh, and set it to manual, or I could try and delete something, and it should. I haven't tested this one. Let's uh, delete it. Aha. We haven't set, the, uh, set up the legend the way we have on the other tables. I need to write that up. All right. It should automatically then set it to manual. So in this case, I would have to go back into the, table, the uh, legend properties and turn off automatic. I wanted to do that. All right. Or I can leave it on here. Now, the fun thing about this is I could have all of these points, they're already set, uh, and lo and behold, there was a found corner here. If I go into this particular um, point, And we'll just say we found that one. It will automatically pop in here. So as I'm working on this, whether I'm changing a uh, properties on a point symbol or survey point properties on a point, they will automatically come in here. Now, in addition, then, I can right-click a line and append to legend. Now, in this case, with a line, it's going to give me an option of filling in uh, what that line is. Ah, caps lock, and I didn't realize it, so I used upper, lower, and then it really looks funky. All right, so I can put different line types in here, and this is where these width factors come into play. So I'm not showing much of this line. Let's increase the symbol width factor. I'll take it to an 8. Say OK. So now I'm showing more of that line. So that's going to come into play if you're using a barbed wire line or something like that. You're going to want to make sure that you're showing enough of that line. And that's where the width factors come into play. So this is the last type of table I have here to talk about. And I see a couple of questions. So let me take a look. Point table feature for, say, a tree species and size identification table for a topo survey. Sure. Would I select the tree traverse to accomplish this? Yes. Can an Excel table be inserted into a drawing? No, we don't have that ability. It is in our suggestion list. What table would you suggest for pipe culvert tile line information such as inlet and outlet invert? Again, this is for a topo type survey. Um, I'm going to guess, uh, Maria, that for the third one, I'm going to guess that you would use a, I guess I would set the traverse tables for your trees and, and those things. Um, uh, but I'm going to guess that for your pipes and culverts, those are going to be in the variety of traverses, several traverses, I'm guessing. So you might want to use a drawing uh, uh, table 
for those and set it to manual and manually add those points to the table. The way that works, uh, the way that would work is, let's see, my point table is just for Riverside Loop. Okay. So you can right click a label and append to table. Now there is no table for lot 10. So when I say append to table, it tells me that I don't have a table. All right, because I don't have a uh, point table for the drawing and I don't have a point table for lot 10, it asks me if I want to create it. So I say OK, and it is going to create a drawing point table set to manual. All right, so now I have a manual table right here that I have put that particular point into. So, yeah. So now I could pick and choose which ones I want in this table. So I could right click this and append to table. Now, when I get over, say, into these lots where it's already in a table, There it is. Let's see what that did. OK, I have now put point two into this table. And I wonder now, I've never done that before. Uh, lot two. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Point table, point table. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't have point tables for anything except for a Riverside Loop. So all right, so it has put that in to this table. Um, so I'm going to guess that that's how you would do for item three in your list there, Maria. Can we get a control corrections table? I got to tell you, David, I don't know what that is. That uh, I would suggest uh, put that together in an email and send that into us, and I will get it in the, into the suggestion list. Uh, ah, all right, another line type. Okay, uh, let's get another line type into the legend. Here's our legend up here. Here's a different line type. I right click it, and at this point, all I need to say is append to legend, which I couldn't see even though it was right in front of me. And then I call it, OK, so this is lot boundary. Oh, and there I go with the caps again, lot boundary. All right, so now that is in the table as well. And you could do this for any lines that you have. Let's, uh, let's take a look at a different line type real quick. Um, I know we're at the end here. Let's just get uh, one of these, uh, something with an X in it, and then we'll append it and we'll see. And I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to say OK. All right, so it's showing the Xs, so I wouldn't need to widen this uh, column for it. So, all right, um, we are out of time right at 4 o'clock. And you guys had some great questions today. I'm not going to open it up for questions. And I really appreciate you guys showing up. I did run into some hiccups along the way today. Um, so we're having fun. All right. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, you guys. Uh, uh, just in case, one last thing, uh, resources, if you go to the Tasks Manager and go to the member area, all of your resources are available in the menu in the member area. If you're not aware of it, if you click on Contact Us down here, you have a lot of ways to get a hold of me. 
You've got the uh, technical uh, support phone line. You've got, you can schedule time on my calendar. You can send an email and attach files. Please, if you're, uh, uh, if you send a picture, please also send the TRV file with it. So, ah, thank you, Steve. I didn't, yeah, I, you're right. My right click finger wasn't tw as twitchy today. Strange, why'd that happen? Okay, so <laughs> anyhow, thank you all for joining me. I really appreciate you being here and uh, you guys uh, uh, stay safe out there and thank you.